was here somewhere. No, no. Ah. I knew I'd find that door. Harrelson, who invited us in. Quite a good friend of mine, actually. Here we are, in his living room. Let me show you around. This rucksack has everything you'll need to go exploring. If you click on it, then that's exactly what you'll do. If you click on this cart, I'll take you on a guided tour of the wood where the gnomes can be found. You'll see where they live and how they work and play. The tour will be just like watching television. If you click on this lantern and then on either the cart or the rucksack, I'll explain to you how they work. The way out of the gnome's house is through the door. Of course. You'll be your own size again until the time comes for your next visit. Sometimes a gnome family will take up residence in a windmill. The house gnome is used to humans and speaks our language really well. The gnome king is chosen from among their number. The garden gnome is usually rather glum and likes to tell miserable stories. When he's had enough of the garden, he goes into the wood. But he doesn't like it there, either. He's quite clever and very critical. The woodland gnome is the most common of all, but even he isn't seen very often. He likes to live under an old tree. The dune gnome is somewhat larger than the woodland gnome. He isn't very fond of humans. He likes to settle in a pine tree or an old rabbit hole. His clothing is rather drab. The farm gnome resembles the house gnome, but is rather quieter. He doesn't like change. He can be found under a haystack, in a stable, or in a shed, or even high up in a loft if there's danger from cats. There are lots of other places in this picture to explore. Are you going to look for them? In this house, you can get to know something of the history of the gnome. Here lives a family that have in their possession a carving of a gnome that is over 2,000 years old. These words were later carved on the figure. They mean gnome, actual size. <laughs> Gnomes probably came originally from Scandinavia in northern Europe. More than 1,500 years ago, a Roman sergeant lived here, and he wrote, Today I beheld with my own eyes a living miniature man. 
He was wearing a red cap and a blue shirt. He spoke our language, though some of the words were strange. He said that gnomes could be found all over our empire and beyond. But he would say nothing further about their history. This they wished to keep secret. There are lots of other places in this picture to explore. Are you going to look for them? Which way do you think you should go? It's hard to tell, isn't it? Gnomes can be found all over the world. Which country does this gnome come from? Point it out on the globe. Yes. This coolie gnome lives in China, in Central Asia. He's very old indeed, and lives on two grains of rice a day, except on his birthday, when he eats an egg roll. No, that's wrong. Try again. Let me show you where this gnome comes from. This is a Syrian gnome from the Middle East. His wife wears a veil. What a pity. You can't see how lovely she is. No, that's wrong. Try again. Let me show you where this gnome comes from. Peru lies in South America, and you'll meet this gnome there. He lives high up in the mountains, where the wind is cold and the air is thin. That's why he wears a blanket made of llama wool. No, that's wrong. Try again. Let me show you where this gnome comes from. This is a gnome from Greece. He loves to eat spinaki af holimono, spinach with egg sauce, followed by a glass of ouzo. After that, he dances the sataki. No, that's wrong. Try again. Let me show you where this gnome comes from. This Indian gnome lives in North America, and in South America too. There were tribes of Indian gnomes in the Wild West, but they're not mentioned in a single story. Yes. The Scottish, or Loch Gnome, often wears a kilt. He's very fond of a nip of whiskey. It's good for his rheumatism, he says. So it is, too. He's on very good terms with the Loch Ness Monster. Yes. Bushman gnomes live in Africa. Whenever he's hungry, he simply shoots some fruit down from the tree with his bow and arrow. He does this lying on his back.
No, that's wrong. Try again. Let me show you where this gnome comes from. In the northernmost tip of Asia, you may meet the Siberian gnome. He spends a lot of time with trolls, and so he can't really be trusted. Gnomes speak their own language among themselves. A Jewish gnome can easily understand a gnome from China. Gnomes must never, ever speak their own language when people are about. That's why no one's ever heard their language, even so. We have no difficulty talking to gnomes because they can speak our own language perfectly. The writing that goes with the gnome language is called runic script. Yes. You can stay here and carry on looking in the places you've been before if you like, or else you can look for the path that will lead you to the next place where gnomes can be found. Some people believe that gnomes change into toadstools when they're in danger. This may well be true, but no one has ever proved it. This lady gnome is quite elderly. She's 346 years old. When she reaches 350, she'll begin to suffer from hair growing on her chin. This woodland gnome is 275 years old and in the prime of life. Gnomes can easily live to be 400 years old. A male gnome weighs about 300 grams. A lady gnome weighs less, between 250 and 275 grams. There are lots of other places in this picture. A gnome is blowing this ball of light from melted rock crystal. He makes many things from crystal. Lanterns, spectacles, telescopes, to name but a few. Which of these objects belong together? No, that's not right. Choose the second one again. No, it's this one. The gnome bakes all his pots, vases and plates himself from clay. He molds this clay on the potter's wheel to the shape he wants. He adds the handles later on. He presses different designs into the wet clay with wooden stamps. Then he allows the clay to dry. The pottery is baked in an oven at a temperature of at least 800 degrees Celsius. When it's cooled, the pot or vase can be decorated and is then ready for use. In the days before the potter's wheel, the gnome used to hollow out pebbles under a constant drip of water. It took hundreds of years, but the stones were as shiny as a mirror. There are lots of other places in this. You can recognize a gnome right away by his red pointed cap. He wears this all the time 
so that birds of prey will not mistake him for a strange kind of mouse. The pointed cap is made from felt. It is completely solid. Gnome children are given their caps at an early age and wear them all their lives. As it wears out on the inside, it gets a new layer of felt on the outside. And so, as the gnome grows, his cap grows. The pointed cap protects the gnome's head from falling branches, acorns and hailstones. He never takes it off. And I'll tell you why. A long time ago, when... So now you know. He would rather be seen with a bare bottom than be caught without his cap. From the gnome's belt, there hangs a bag of tools, knife, hammer, drill, file, and so on. Belts, boots, and tobacco pouches are all made from leather. The hide comes from dead animals, rabbits, mice, squirrels, and so on. Gnome trousers are greenish brown. Depending on where they live, Gnomes wear boots made of felt, shoes of pressed birch bark, or willow wood clogs. There are lots of other places in this picture to explore. Are you going to look for them? This isn't a gnome, though you might think so from the red pointed cap. It's a dwarf. <laughs> Don't play this game if you scare easily or if you have bad dreams. Don't say I haven't warned you. In the woods live other creatures who can be mistaken for gnomes. Solve the following riddles. It cries miserably or laughs dolefully. Sorry, that isn't it. But what can it be? Sorry, that isn't it. But what? Sorry, that isn't it. The river, wood and mountain spirit is invisible because he can work magic. He isn't good. But he isn't bad, either. He is strong, fast, ugly, and he stinks. No, that's not it. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> A troll is stupid, primitive, and will believe anything. But the gnome has a great deal of trouble with him. If ever a troll should catch a gnome, then the most terrible things can happen. One of the nastiest troll tricks is called sharpening the gnome. He also likes to hold a gnome close to a flame so that he catches fire. Then he throws him to the other trolls to put the flames out. Locking him up, holding a knife to his throat, putting him in a treadmill and making him dance on the end of a chain. In short, anything that can be invented by a diseased brain. They'll never kill a gnome, though he may be badly injured. Luckily, he's usually clever enough to escape. It lives under the ground, Sometimes in and sometimes above. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. Listen. No, that's not it. An elf is a not unpleasant teasing ghost between 10 and 30 centimeters high. There are male, female and neuter elves. Sometimes their teasing can have serious consequences, but the elf can never see any harm in it. For instance, they've lured this man into a swamp. He 
He has a good-natured character, though there are exceptions. Wrong, it isn't easy, is it? 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 The dwarf is almost extinct. He digs for gold and silver in the mines, lives in groups, and is a master ironworker. He's crazy about gold and silver. That's why he... A goblin is 30 centimeters high and can only be found in large forests. When someone dies, a goblin will sometimes appear to his family. Luckily, there are only two or three of these creatures left in the world. The snot gurgle. He stinks and dribbles and his hair is full of lice. A gnome who falls into his hands has little chance of staying alive. <laughs> It only lives in Lapland. It li the friendly Uldra has control over the large animals of the forest. Perhaps because he has long pointed teeth. This creature is often confused with the gnome because it can take on many different shapes. An ordinary house ghost will sometimes keep people awake by knocking or by pulling their blankets off the bed. An angry house ghost can be very malicious and cause drought or illness among cattle. It cries miserably or laughs dolefully. There are lots of other places in this picture to explore. These are newly wed gnomes on their honeymoon. They sleep in hollow trees, rabbit holes or empty birds' nests. A gnome lives with his parents until he's a hundred. Then he gets married, has children and grows very old along with his wife. There are lots of other places in this picture to... This place looks very familiar. Have you been this way before? A wild boar. People are scared to death of them. But they don't frighten gnomes, oh no. The gnome is good friends with most animals. He speaks their language and understands their problems. The animals always know where to find him when they need help, and they are always ready to lend him a hand. Here you can see parts of four different animals. Make a complete picture of each one. From an early age, gnome children are told that polecats hunt frogs and paralyze them to be eaten later. That's why gnome children are always so scared of polecats. A domestic cat that's gone wild can also put the wind up a gnome. Such a cat doesn't really belong to the natural animal world and therefore isn't to be trusted.